Shalom, truth seekers. I am a firm believer in Leviticus 23 when it said that we are to proclaim the Creator's holy days in their seasons. And per sundial efforts measuring the seasonal divisions earlier this year, my current understanding is that today is the first day of the solar season of fall or autumn which also coincides with the first day of the seventh month which per leviticus 23 the first day of the seventh month was the day of trumpets so what do i know about the day of trumpets today uh not much make a joyful noise to your creator you know, it's a, it's a holy day, it's a holy day of rest. It's similar to a Sabbath day, like you can rest and be thankful for the rest. I expect that Yeshua may someday return on a future day of trumpets. Hallelujah. I recommend listening to uh, Jason Block, Behold He Is Coming in anticipation of such a day. But um, the last thing I'll mention is, check out Nehemiah chapter eight, verse one. I was, uh, I was surprised to see, it looked like Ezra was reading the law to the people on, uh, on the first day of the seventh month. Like I thought when I read the Torah, there was an instruction to read it on the, like during the Feast of Tabernacles, maybe, maybe during the last, the eighth great day. But uh, just as a good example uh, and an encouragement, be in the word today if you can, and maybe even read some of the instructions of the Almighty. Deuteronomy, good, great, great uh, edification there. And if you're new to all of this and you're wondering why uh, I'm even talking about any of this, I do believe when the Savior said, think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets, until heaven and earth passes, not one jot or tittle of the instructions of the Almighty will pass. And we know in Revelation 21, heaven and earth are going to pass someday. But they haven't yet. So I believe in all the scripture, applying it to my life without any stretching or twisting of what I read... And, you know, it's a day-by-day -day thing, working out my salvation with fear and trembling. And, uh, you know, the Creator puts things on your heart in His perfect timing for you to look into more. And so these holy days are the Creator's special times. And, uh, sorry about the dogs barking. I'll have to show you the homestead real quick. We, it's harvest season, and we, um... We did just get done with harvesting a whole bunch of potatoes this year. The weeds did take over a little bit, but, uh, and the corn, we were like a month late in the corn. But we had a new homestead this year, so we are learning a lot. And uh, I, I pretty much just got that in the corn just for the sake of learning, but next year we'll do better on that. But anyway, um, what was I saying? The, um, and you can kind of see the, the leaves are starting to turn just a little bit. Uh, but the Creator's uh, a holy days, His Sabbaths, I did lose my train of thought on that. But I mean, they are a special time, a time of rest uh, and celebration. And, uh, you know, I think prophetic too. Like I said, one day I do expect to see the Savior probably doing so well at the least seeing some big things happen on these days like you know he was the passover lamb he was the first fruits uh pentecost like the the fire fell on the day of pentecost it wasn't it wasn't pentecost 
on that day in the New Testament, Pentecost means like 50, pent counting to 50. And, uh, you know, it was the Feast of Weeks. Things get lost in translation, but it was, uh, it was from the beginning. Uh, well, at least <laughs> it was, it, it's just lost in translation in the Greek. You get confused about that. But, um, and in the New Testament, I'll just rattle off some other things. Therefore, let us keep the feast, said Paul. Let us keep it. That's New Testament, you know? And uh, it's just, uh, you know, at one point he was sailing from one island to another, and he said the fast was near. That's talking about the Day of Atonement, which is coming up. And so anyway, um, you know, not one jot or tittle would pass until heaven and earth pass. And so I believe that it's all applicable. I want to try and obey it without any stretching or twisting. And um, I guess that's, that's all I have right now. I hope you enjoy if you're if you're celebrating these times and you're trying to be obedient to your creator if you understand that it's a slightly different time in the pureness of your heart that's between you and your creator even i might be wrong about the timing of this so i i do believe we should just do the best we can and as he puts things on our hearts be diligent to look into it he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I've been listening to the book of Hebrews lately, and I'll add one more thing. I think there's a book in Hebrews that says, without holiness, no one shall see the creator. So holiness is a big deal, and it's related to righteousness, but it's like a, it's in a class all of its own, too. Uh, because you, you got to imagine your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're like a receptor of his spirit. And if your body is unclean, you're going to attract unclean things, even demons. But if you keep it pure and holy, you'll become a conduit. You know, at one point in the, um, in the Torah, it said, um, keep your camp clean. You know, and if you if you had to use the bathroom, like, make sure you take a paddle and you cover it so when, when, the, when the creator is walking through your camp, he doesn't see something unclean and turn away from you. So being clean is a big deal, and uh, we got to learn about that, the creator's standards of cleanliness, and I encourage you to keep your temple clean so that he will want to come and abide in you. So I guess that's it for now. Uh, shalom and may Abba bless you as you continually seek out his truths in love with a pure heart.